Good evening, everyone. Teaching kids underwater robotics seems like a deep dive into madness, but I promise you, no kid or robot was lost at sea. Yet. <laughs> Have you ever felt the joy of bringing someone a new passion that transforms their life and becomes a part of who they are? Today, I'm going to take you on a journey that started with a simple idea and grew into a program that is breaking barriers for many students in STEM today. My journey starts in sixth grade when I taught my first online class on biology in 2020. This class sparked my love for teaching and inspired me to look for new ways I could share my passions with others. Over the years, I've taught numerous classes on topics like biology, chemistry, computer science, and even some with the targeted audience of people with disabilities, underserved communities, and senior citizens. Making these classes were considerably hard and required me to take time from school, being my own editor, creating eye-catching flyers and presentations, my own outreach team, finding email lists, schools, and volunteers. And then, of course, I had to create a curriculum that was fun, interactive, and comprehensive. So why did I continue to create these classes when there were just so much work? Well, this is for one reason, bringing someone a new passion. It's like seeing someone receive a gift that forever becomes a part of who they are, and just being partially responsible for that is worth it. My latest and hardest endeavor so far has been creating an after-school Mate ROV program. If you didn't know already, Mate ROV is an international robotics competition where you create an ROV, remotely operated vehicle, and see how well it performs underwater. These are rather complex topics, and introducing it to my school as the first competitive STEM program was going to be hard, especially to only an audience of fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. They say teaching kids is like herding cats. <laughs> teaching kids underwater robotics? Like herding cats underwater. <laughs> but seeing their faces light up, every time their ROV would turn on, made every splash worth it. Because of this, I was super determined and really excited to make it work. So I made my goals simple. I didn't just want them to remember what they learned, but I want them to remember how they felt while learning. In doing this, they didn't just break down the barriers between themselves and STEM short term, but long term. To do this, I had to incorporate the fact that STEM is a lot more than just memorizing facts and formulas. It's not how fast you finish a task, but how. And this is what makes teaching really amazing. It's not seeing how well and fast they retain the knowledge you give them. It's seeing what they do with it and the solutions they come up with it. The more creativity, ingenuity, and wonder they put in, the more successful and fun is the class. And this is something that's especially important in this area of STEM. This brings me to my last point making sure they don't scare away from a topic that will start out as incomprehensible. Instead, they see it as a topic of unknown to be excited about, to learn and enjoy. At first, the kids attended for one main reason. And I quote, my mom says I should do something smart with my time, followed by a face of frustration. But as the weeks went on, I noticed an unmistakable shift. They started staying over 30 minutes after class, working on their ROVs, having fun, joking around, building, even occasionally brought in their parents, showing off what they learned and what they built. They were proud of themselves and their work. They would do more than you can ever directly expect of them, assigning their own homework, staying after class, creating their own mascots. At this point, it was no longer a class. It was a community. There were no longer students attending, but there were friends who came together to learn, have fun, and build. At this point, they didn't break down the barriers between themselves and STEM, but they learned how to break down their own barriers. And this is something that cannot be taught, but more so kindled. Seeing their rapid progress and excitement made me want to think bigger. I didn't just want to break down the barriers for these students, but expand to other campuses. So I created a curriculum that could be taught with a teacher who has no STEM experience. This can make STEM more inclusive and fun for students and teachers alike. In conclusion, breaking barriers between students and STEM is more than giving them knowledge. It's about creating an environment where learning and using your creativity is fun and accessible. It's about making them feel capable to explore new worlds versus scaring away from a topic that starts out as incomprehensible. 
And lastly, and most importantly, it's about creating a love for learning that will last them a lifetime. Thank you.